Thank you so much guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're watching this video and you have not yet subscribed, I'm urging you to kindly support me by subscribing to my channel. You can also give this video a like or just press that thumbs up button down below so that YouTube can recommend this video and this entire channel to reach out to others. And I must say that recently I've been receiving a lot of subscribers so I just want to take this opportunity also to thank those who have already subscribed and they are currently watching this video and I am telling you that I don't take that support for granted. So feel very much welcome ladies and gentlemen and thank you so much for your support. Now it is very clear that the retired president Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta will not escape the blame for omissions after the Azmiu Lomoja alliance lost the 2022 general election. I'm saying this simply because I've come to realize that majority of the Azmiu Lomoja alliance leaders have not yet moved on politically speaking. Therefore, recently they have started launching several attacks on the retired president Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta so badly until I ask myself, could there be a possibility that it is Raila Amolo Odinga who is actually sending these leaders to attack Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta? And if it is not true that Raila Odinga is the one sending them, why can't Raila Amolo Odinga stand up as a leader of Azmiolo Moja Alliance and strictly warn these leaders against attacking Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta? We have somebody like the Embakasi East member of the National Assembly, Honorable Babu Wino, who made it very clear recently that he does not want to hear anything to do with Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta, simply because, according to him, is he believes that Uhuru Kenyatta did not have any good intentions to Raila Odinga and that he never supported Raila Odinga. That is why he never made Raila Odinga to become the president of the Republic of Kenya. That is how Babu Wino is talking. We have somebody like the ODM party secretary general and also the senator for Nairobi County, Honorable Edwin Sifuna who also made it very clear recently that the Jubilee Party can withdraw from the Azmiolo Moja Alliance if they want to. Because, according to him, the Jubilee Party did not deliver the amount of votes as per the agreement in the larger Mount Kenya region. Therefore, they did not participate so much in the Azmiolo Moja Alliance. Therefore, they can leave that alliance if they want to. We have somebody like the Kileleshwa MCA, member of county assembly and a close ally of Raila Molodinga, Robert Alai, who also believes that Uhuru Kenyatta did not have any good intentions to Raila Molodinga. So these Azimio Moja alliance leaders are very bitter at Uhuru Kenyatta simply because they wanted Uhuru Kenyatta to use force and make Raila Odinga to become the president of the Republic of Kenya. Not knowing that Uhuru Kenyatta is a very democratic and a very peaceful leader that we have in this country. What Uhuru Kenyatta did in the just concluded 2022 general election, he basically handed over power to somebody who Kenyans had elected and he did that simply because he's a very democratic leader. So these Azimio Moja Alliance leaders must respect Uhuru Mwege Kenyatta. And I'm saying this simply because of the following reasons. Number one, we must ask ourselves, immediately Uhuru Kenyatta declared his support for Raila Molodinga. What was the effect? Did he gain or did he lose politically speaking? In my considered opinion, Uhuru Kenyatta lost completely immediately he supported Raila Amolo Odinga. Meaning Uhuru Kenyatta sacrificed his political career to Raila Amolo Odinga. Therefore, he must be shown a lot of respect. 
So the Jubilee party, first of all, has never recovered because of that support by Uhuru Kenyatta supporting Raila Odinga. The Jubilee party was humiliated very badly in the larger Mount Kenya region. Uhuru Kenyatta was humiliated very badly by his own people, the Kikuyu community. Immediately he supported Raila Odinga and the UDA party, which was three months old by then, humiliated the Jubilee party, which was the ruling government. And the UDA party uh, actually uh, won majority of seats in the larger Mount Kenya region where Uhuru Kenyatta comes from. The second thing is after the handshake, ladies and gentlemen, that handshake made Uhuru Kenyatta unpopular in the larger Mount Kenya region. And that is why um, Uhuru Kenyatta, if you, if, you, if you noticed his moves by then, he started to try and resurrect his political, his popularity in the larger Mount Kenya region. That is why he had to organize for the Sagana 1, Sagana 2 and Sagana 3 meeting simply because it, his popularity faded away. One thing you must remember, ladies and gentlemen, is that in 2013, the people of Mount Kenya region voted Uhuru Mwenke Kenyatta overwhelmingly to the last man and he acquired 90% of entire votes in the Mount Kenya region. In the 20, in 2017 general election, this lead, uh, the supporters of Uhuru Kenyatta did the same same thing twice. They voted Uhuru Mwenke Kenyatta overwhelmingly uh, twice in 2017 general election. But immediately after the 2018 handshake between Uhuru and Raila Odinga, the popularity of Uhuru Kenyatta faded away completely in the larger Mount Kenya region. The third thing, why Uhuru Kenyatta should be respected by this Azimio Moja Alliance leaders, it is because of his big four agenda. Um, his big four agenda lapsed completely. And why did his big four agenda collapse? It is because of something called the Building Bridges Initiative. So the handshake gave birth to the BBI and they wasted three good years from 2018, 2019 and 2020, you know, trying to, 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 to they, they tried so much to campaign for, 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 for the BBI. And finally, the BBI was declared null, void, null and void and illegal. And just like that, Uhuru Kenyatta did not manage to achieve his agendas that he had for the people of the Republic of Kenya and the Big Four agenda lapsed completely. Also, the fourth point, ladies and gentlemen, why Uhuru Kenyatta should, must be respected by these leaders, it is because Uhuru Kenyatta brought Raila Odinga to, the, to his government, to the Kenya, to, to, the, to the Jubilee uh, government. And after that handshake, you could tell that the person who was in charge of the government was Uhuru Kenyatta followed by Raila Molodinga and the entire ODM allies. And William Samuel Ruto, who was then the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, now acted as the opposition leader, whereby he started opposing what government was doing. So that sacrifice made by Uhuru Kenyatta, sidelining his own deputy, and bringing in another person who was his competitor, who, polit who was his political enemy. That is a great move and Uhuru Kenyatta must be respected to that point. And also the fifth point and the last one, it is because Uhuru Kenyatta campaigned thoroughly for Raila Molodinga to the last day. And I remember one day to the elections, Uhuru Kenyatta was there at radio station in the larger Mount Kenya region to simply convince his people in their native language, the Kikuyu language, why he decided to support Raila Molodinga and why they should embrace and vote for Raila Molodinga. 
So because of that move, I think Uhuru Kenyatta must be respected with these leaders. I don't know what you think. Let me hear your thoughts on the comment section below. Otherwise, I don't have much to add on. Thank you so much for your continued support and see you in my next video. Thank you so much, guys.